So there's one thing that obviously doesn't change, which is one design gives way to the other. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, this is again a continuous process. So don't think about organization design as a event in itself or a project that has been undertaken and completed. It's a living entity which continues to adapt for survival. You say, isn't there a saying in your consulting world that you remodel the plane while the plane is flying? That's true. That, you know, that's, that's a continuous <laughs> process. Actually, it's a gyroscope. Uh, organizations have been compared to gyroscopes which uh, are stable yet fluid in, yeah. in being adapted. Uh, that, that's the analogy given as far as organizations are concerned. I thought I'd, I'd quickly share uh, one example from the consulting world given that I've spent 20 years now in consulting. And in the consulting world, you know, the, the pendulum uh, <coughs> has always shifted. And remember, this is a matrix type of organization. But the pendulum has always shifted from being, you know, either you have on one axis geography, which means India, Middle East, Asia Pacific. Um, that could be one axis. Uh, and the other axis has been product, so line of business that you're in. So typically, those are the two that have always operated, and there's been tension which one is more dominant at yeah, different points absolutely. in time. And uh, organizations have struggled to, to so-called find the right balance between how much influence the geography has versus the line of business has. And that's also typical uh, of other organizations that work in a matrix environment. Uh, where there is always tension, pulls and push between the two accesses depending upon which ones you pick. Um, the one thing that has, uh, that has prompted this, and I can uh, talk about some of the triggers, is that customers have expected to be served globally. Um, and when I say served globally, that means you need to operate where they are. And with global standards of quality and excellence which means what you have to offer should be the same experience irrespective of where you offer. So as far as products are concerned, there needs to be synergy as far, uh, you know, wherever you operate. And therefore, there is always a relationship as far as product or line of business is concerned. And geography, because we believe that the local customer has different needs. Uh, you know, it's like think global, act local, which, uh, Clearly, is you know HSBC, for example, had that tagline. Now, what is changing is that the customer itself is becoming more and more prominent, and therefore, one access in many consulting companies is tending to become the customer, which means you may be organized by a customer grouping, which could be industry, that you have similar types of customers in a particular industry, and therefore, your service is is of a is of similar kind as far as that industry is concerned because they have similar needs. Um, what impact does that have? That obviously has an impact on uh, the influence an individual who leads a customer portfolio has within the organization. Because the metrics now that you associate with success is, for example, share of wallet or growth in a particular client segment. And uh, therefore, there's an alteration even in your metrics, performance metrics, in the measures that you have when you undertake an organization design. The, the reason I'm narrating this story is that there are multiple facets, not only of reporting relationships, but of performance metrics, the influence that you exercise, the importance that an individual or role gets within an organization, all are impacted with uh, a change in strategic priorities, which again could be influenced by an internal trigger or an external trigger. Let's come to academia. So what's, what specifically are we seeing changes as far as design with academia in mind? Obviously well, online can, education is an important one. We can uh, go, on, uh, go on on this topic until the cows come mm -hmm. home, but let me give you, I think I thought you asked for a couple of stories which could like, like one of the things that we talked about the environment is, of course, what we call hyper competition, right? So uh, I operate, I mean, I, I was running a business school. As some of you may not know, the India happens to have the largest number of business schools in the world. Um, it is, of course, a, 
uh, interesting story that we also have the largest number of unemployment, unemploy unemployable business graduates in the world as well <laughs> coming out of some of these schools. Uh, so in this environment of uh, hyper competition, when I was leading IMT Ghaziabad, uh, one, uh, the issue of differentiating and uh, issue of, uh, uh, of really benchmarking or playing in the global league, uh, given that in India, of course, IIMs and uh, ISBs have, have already occupied a, uh, a space. Uh, and I have always believed that uh, organizations, uh, you know, positioning an organization is like positioning a star in the sky. There is enough space for another star. Uh, so we decided to jump on uh, uh, a very, uh, probably the world's most stringent accreditation process called AACSB. Uh, we, and, and I remember it was a, you know, initially it was a very tough, uh, uh, you know, navigation in the board as to should we go for it, should we not go for it, because that would, uh, you know, uh, that would entail significant change in the ship as we, as we sail it. And, and, uh, and given the assets and encumbrances that was in place for Ghaziabad, uh, there were obviously adequate number of naysayers. And as you know, there's the Abilene syndrome that at, at the end I managed to pull the decision off that yes, we should go for it because and, uh, you know, there were only three institutions in the country, uh, ISBI and Calcutta and TAPME, uh, who had actually uh, gone for it. And we knew it was going to be a long, uh, you know, long uh, uh, process because it's excruciating process of defining standards uh, in, in, uh, among faculty, standards on student management, standards on your corporate engagement, and also standards on your entire organizational governance process, uh, et cetera. So it's a, and, and you have to actually redesign and deploy, collect data, look at gaps, take actions to fill those gaps, and show to the audit, to the to the accreditors that list, you have closed what he called closed the loop. Um, you know, to cut cut to the chase of the story, it was obviously you know um, uh, as you know, education is a very interesting industry um, that where the students' age does not increase much over years. In 20 years, the students' age average age remained the same, but unfortunately, the professors' average age keep on uh, going up. <laughs> And, and that, uh, in the context of today's, in the context of to all, the, all the things that we talked about before, that you know, these guys are learning differently, they grow up with technology, and you have professors who are not comfortable with technology. They are, you know, they come from a different era. <laughs> so um, I don't want to get into the details, Nishchai, but uh, essentially it was a combination of obviously a strategy of hiring, strategy of creating, you call it SWAT teams, I used to call them, the, uh, tasks, task forces. Uh, essentially, some of the tips was that you know I obviously had to bet on the young people uh, uh, to 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 lead uh, uh, you know cells excel, cells of excellence, whether it is uh, research, whether it is uh, corporate engagement, um, and of course, as we all know, like moving this big elephant, um, of, you know there will be naysayers and there are orthodoxies. And, uh, and, and one thing that we haven't spoken about, and perhaps we can spend some time about in uh, organizational redesign or gyroscope or whatever you will call it, is the politics of it. Uh, you know, and I'm sure, uh, ma'am, you, in your, you, know, you, know, in, you made it look very like a case study that you would study in business schools, but the real thing is the politics, the unstated ones. And uh, uh, I'm proud to say that we pulled it off. I mean, I, we pulled it off in about um, less, you know, pro probably record time, less than four years, where other institutions like ISB or uh, in Calcutta has taken much, much longer. Uh, but uh, I mean, if you were to ask me that, how, you know, what was the secret sauce? The secret sauce uh, really was to get the ownership of 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 the organization uh, latched on to an aspiration that is of, about which they are going to be proud about. Okay, so. Nobody, uh, as you would all say, you know, nobody wants to be in a losing team. And, and once uh, that is sold to every individual, and I'm not just talking about the faculty, but also the students and the, and the, you know, the act, you know, the, uh, all the rest of the support team, that listen, this is something that is going to change the way you are seen. And, and once, you, once you get that ownership going, uh, which fortunately we did, um, we of course, I managed to hire about 44 faculty and made conditions such that about 30 of them left. Uh, you know, obviously 
uh, some of it is very painful, as you right, rightly said, that it was not very easy to let go. Uh, but, but as long as the strategy and the destination uh, and the vision is, is internally sold, and, and, uh, and, and, and of course they see the begin, you know, it, it, a, a vision for the, for the future, or, or the, what we call a picture of success, as how they would look like, uh, uh, you know, um, things can be navigated that so way. So there are often questions, and this is uh, the last closing comments before we come to you with your questions, mindful of your time. Uh, what's the right timing for an organization design? <laughs> and uh, often enough, A, uh, you should have enough data and evidence that there is misalignment. Um, clearly, organization design or redesign is about creating the harmony uh, of the various variables that we spoke of. Two, there should be a burning platform. And three, you should, you should have the awareness that you have enough influence, a coalition as it is often referred to, of influence to guide the organization redesign Absolutely. through, to see it through. So you shouldn't start on the note where you don't know if that the picture you have painted is not exciting enough for those who are going to be impacted by the change. Okay, so that's as far as timing which you spoke of. That clearly there was a vision where people were inspired by. Okay. Yeah, uh, if, if I may add a little story from uh, our should industry. We, should we? Uh, Two minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know the telco is going through a massive, massive change. We have started with a kind of business model of uh, buying a spectrum, setting up tower, offering call, making a lot of money, right? <clears throat> and then we saw this disruptors like Google come. They just offered this Android thing, and which was put into devices and for free, that gave them the benefit. All the app economy started, and then there was a service layer created above us, and we all of a sudden found ourselves to be a dump pipe, right? We could no longer have the premium of the service that we provide, and that has really knocked us as a whole industry, and that has told us we got to wake up and create that service layer above the connectivity and access that we provide. And that has really compelled us to change a lot of things in the organization. Our headquarters is in Oslo. Completely now what has happened is the digital unit has been created and the whole marketing unit of our organization have been rebased in Singapore because that's where you get a lot of these new innovators coming up where we can pick up their brains, bring them into our organization and provide that kind of a service which would be a value adding for our customer for the future. People will have means to uh, get their connectivity. I'll just end with one little story. Uh, I stay here, my daughter goes to school in a different country. When he came to visit me in summer, I got a new SIM for her, right? Thinking she will need that SIM, local SIM. When I offered her, she seemed not very interested. She said, I'll, I'll take it when I need it. They are teenagers. They cannot remain without unconnected. I was observing her. When we were at home, she was using the Wi-Fi. She was having chat. She was making call to her friend. When we were in the market, she went to do the coffee shop, got the password, remained connected. When we were in the car, car <laughs> if you use my mobile phone for hotspotting, she didn't use the SIM for 15 days, still remained connected throughout. That wow. didn't give us any <laughs> revenue, but she was connected. That's where our business model in front of my eye was crumbling down. <laughs> I think the disruption we are facing. Oh, so that compels us to change the way we operate, change the organization and everything. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, questions? I'll go to the back back ventures first, and then I can see the. Okay, let's go to you. Thank you. My name is Rajiv Purana. My compliments to all the panelists. The discussions were very fruitful, especially because they were from an MNC private sector perspective. Because in India, that private sector constitutes just 2.57 percent of the organized workforce, and if you look at 1.87% of the government and 4.03% of the public sector. Restructuring is only adapting IT, but the processes remain the same. 
nobody has questioned them ever. However, my question is, sir, today we are talking about Make in India. The question is, SMEs are bound to grow. In any case, in the organized sector, they are 82%. What are the mistakes large organizations in India have done vis-a-vis -vis restructuring, which these SMEs in times to come should not do? because they have to also grow. So therefore, what is your advice in terms of restructuring for organizations before they structure? Any specific person? Rajiv, you would like to ask? Nisha, you decide. You're the master. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> wants to go? Okay, Anyone. I'll go for it. Yeah, DP. So if I've understood your question, it is what is the advice to the medium and small scale companies which are scaling up with respect to they shouldn't do some mistakes which large corporations have done? So a wrong question. Because the, the large corporations are large and, uh, you know, you're talking about what they, okay, so anyway, I think the most important part is when you are scaling, you need certain processes, right? And uh, you can scale with certain controls and processes in place. Uh, do not put just talent into it. Look at and leverage technology wherever you can put it today. So as from a technology person, I'm saying they must leverage technology which exists today and they must make sure that they are able to intubate <laughs> small entrepreneurs within their own piece so that their DNA doesn't change. So today, the, uh, most of the medium, the CEO or the promoter or the managing director, whatever you may call it, drives a lot of pieces. I think going forward, if he's going to scale, he has to let go. That is what I would say. And the same thing applies, to, uh, I think, in large MNCs. It is no longer the CEOs or managing directors. It is the process owners. It is the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial cells or businesses which have been created within it which are functioning. So that's what my advice would be. Let go as you scale, put your processes, create mini entrepreneurs within your own setup so that you don't lose your DNA which is of fleet footedness, quick decision making, and you leverage technology. That's what I would like to say. If I may just add with DP, when it comes to capability, the mistakes always we have done is look at what is competence requirement of the organization and build those competencies. By that time, we have get the organization to that stage, those competencies are no longer relevant. So it's very, very important to understand what are the competencies that will be required two years down the road and build it from now. Otherwise, you are always behind the curve. So that's one thing we have learned in the hard way. Build on it. Message is skills is the new currency. Relationships is good because normally in promoter small scale, you build up very close relationships but do not ignore the skill piece, because skill is what's going to take you forward. Great. Yes, sir. Uh, please introduce yourself, and if there's a specific person you'd like to ask the question. I am Satvinder Singh. I am Central Council member of the Institute of Company Secretaries of India. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Shankar, for representing us, I, I would say, being uh, part of, uh, as a company secretary also for on the group, and I heard you about from the corporate laws and other things, and there are many things which have come for this, whether you're talking about the cultural, you talk about the ethics, you talk about the confidentiality. But I think the important part, apart from this, which I preserve is that when you were discussing about the organizational design, be it functional design, be it uh, the other designs for this thing. And when we were talking about a change, I think the only one thing which is constant in life is change. And your designs will also change depending upon the economic environment, the way we are globally coming into this. But as, as the HR manager, how we are talking about is designing the SOPs, standard operating practices, with the changes in this thing. My personal view is that as an end, I am representing any private equity investor. I think number of times we ask the company just to look at the employment engagement letters which you have with the managers, which you have with the senior officials. What about the confidentiality clause? What should be the exclusivity clause? The non-compete? And then we are talking about is the non-solicitation and other things. because. They are more concerned. 
And then there are a number of litigations which are going on because if you have developed in the technology company, suppose if you have invented something, it belongs to the individual. But you don't have this thing that ultimately it will vest into the company. So in a way, and when Mr. Shankar was talking about the Companies Act, merely on the Companies Act and the SEBI and the corporate laws, there are even 17 policies which you have to look at it when we go for the due diligence as a company secretary. We have to find it out that how we have to make it for this thing. In the operational part you have all have talked about, but how to protect the organization. I think the governance structure is also very, very important sure. for a HR person to look into this that, okay, how the growth has to be. Normally it happens is that, okay, you're going ahead with the business, but you forget about it. This thing so how is. do we exercise yeah, how do governance we? to protect? And particularly now in the, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and other things, you see all you have seen the instances even in the Walmart case and other things which are coming for this. How do you understood develop? the question. Can I? You understood? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, there is one thing, <laughs> of course, you did make a mention about changes and how changes in design and organization should be there. And also the second part is about the policy part. Uh, let me take the first question. There is always inertia tied up to status quo. In a corporate, uh, being in status quo is the most comfortable position and you'll be politically right. But I don't think that will do any good for any organization. Uh, the changes in law which we just discussed at the beginning, uh, while you'll have a multiple of things, how do you address it, whether internal, external, outsourcing, having people more than the dedicated role, having a temporary role. But the most important thing which we did and which we anticipated is this change which we saw in the laws is not going to be driven by the senior people. Because senior people had a baggage of a 50-year-old law and it was more difficult for them to unlearn and relearn. We were very clear that it will be the younger ones and the most junior ones who is going to drive the change, who is going to make the change, and at the same time, how do you ensure that the senior people are also not left unattended? So one, we really sent out a clear message that asking for help is actually a sign of strength and not a sign of weakness. That was the first thing which we sent out. Second thing, the younger generation who had no baggage of the past taking the lead. Third, how do you do a reverse mentoring? mentoring? And people who are more open, it was done openly. And people who are hesitant were done indirectly. Second part, as uh, the gentleman here, BP and other people also mentioned, knowledge today is a downloadable commodity. It is not what you can access, how you can access the most important information, relevant information, in the quickest possible time, leaving aside the irrelevant. And since you made a mention about even uh, whether we as company secretaries or compliance, how do you make a house of excellence? Today, the biggest problem I'm finding is, or the biggest challenge between before us is, how do we simplify things and put it to our business partners? They will, the, our big, my biggest KRA today is, whether it is GST, whether it is companies like, how do you simplify? If it is a related party, I will put it in a one pager so that that's how my business partner is going to be. That's a house of excellence which we have to create and we have to grow beyond that. The second is what I find is impatience is the order of the day. Today, the moment a person comes to a meeting also, whether it's a business partner, the CEO, he before starting, he may ask you actually to end. Sometimes uh, there's a joke going on, uh, like we ask, should I start with a thank you slide? if you're that impatient, you know? To that extent, impatience is. So how do you ensure that your business partner, how do you ensure there is empathy? How do you ensure that what he wants, if he asks, you're definitely going to give it. But without asking, how do you give it? In fact, uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, we were in a CFO conference and uh, we, the CFO was just delivering. How, what is it which he expects from a company secretary or a compliance or a service function and definition of house of excellence. And he gave it in just six lines. It is a Bollywood jingle and I'll repeat it and they'll say how it is relevant to our house of excellence. He said, Mere ghar ka seedha sa itna pata hai, Mere ghar ke aage mohabbat likha hai, Na dastak zaruri na awaz dena, Main saasoh ki raftar se jaan loongi, 
khawao ke khushboo se pehchan loge so what he says in your house of excellence empathy must be written in front the way you talked about saaso ki raftar the way a business partner size you should be able to say what he wants transfer from a radical partnering to a value partnering see how you will be able to address each one without he asking if he ask and you give you have to we have an sop that you do it immediately or within 48 24 hours at least this is as far as the excellence part is concerned the second part you made a mention about policies the biggest problem we find today is a copy paste of policy which we should try and avoid as far as possible today if before i inculcate any policy i have to first see whether i have a cultural appetite if i take policies with complete disregard to my culture and its appetite and uh, how it's going to adopt execute uh, we are go all going to be into trouble just like a low tide will reveal all the rubbish in the beach if you are going to adopt a culture or a policy which is not adoptable to your culture you are going to be exposed when a low tide comes what happened today whether it's enron toshiba or even recently volkswagen where they had cheating devices inside the engine which could really see when uh, emission norm was being and detected and fudging the outcome so i'm saying culture is also equally important as to how do you imbibe those policies adopting to your culture i thought uh, slightly a long answer but i hope i've just been right. able to add. excellent thank you so thank I you i just want to add on to that thank you what we have done is uh, when we were going through this transformational journey we have also relooked at the value set the way we lead the organization right so one of the two liners we have uh, given to all employees is we said embrace the red challenge the green what does that mean because this is very counterintuitive right normally you would always embrace the green and then challenge the red we just reverse that in an innovative high technology org- what does that mean we said don't just look at something is green and be complacent and be fine with it check and question the status quo understand why it's green because you want to be able to repeat it and embrace the red is it's okay if something is going wrong acknowledge it and you work together in a cohesive collaborative manner so that you can convert the red into the green if you don't oh, embrace wow. it there is no way you will be able to work with it and you know decode it so that's my two liner good i'll take your permission one more question or call it quits okay so last question and if um, you want to ask the last question okay only last question oh. only last <laughs> yeah yeah madam please tell that ki how to ensure not to jeopardize the skills and capability while designing the skill on the authority and responsibility aspects because most of the people wants to hold the authority doesn't give the authority but responsible what would be your prescription prescription for the indian organization is concerned how to how to ensure that the authority is also perlocated everybody wants to become the responsibility you are responsible but having no authority that is the biggest challenge in organization design in something the, you get responsibility yeah. but without authority or the, or, and that is the biggest challenge and all are suffering here whatever every level okay be it called the board or be it called the ceo be it called the everything everybody is saying people are giving getting responsibility not authority sare cheez puch ke saab se puch ke bataunga aakhri wala hota hai chahe narendra modi puche aur chahe koi bhi puche so there are different ways to skin the goat as we say one of the <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm using an analogy but really what's happening in organizations which are agile and you know future thinking is given the millennials which is what you know many of my you know expert speakers out here have spoken is we have started looking at influencing with authority is a very important phenomenon today because it's not about a title or a designation power comes to you because of your capability so it could be a junior level engineer but because of his ability to ideate it could be someone who is able to bring in teams and collaboratively question you know a given status quo so we are working on those concepts so it's not the designation or a title which would run anything 
So your recognition and your reward system, performance you know, metrics, whatever you drive in terms of your organization clearly lays out it's the team synergies which you're looking at. That could be the virtue you're driving. The other is you're not talking about influence which is in a hierarchical system what you're referring to. Okay, there is a responsibility but you know I don't have the authority. So we are distributing it because today you're talking to teams which are distributed across globe, across geographies, and within the same geography, again, there could be multiple functions because that's the structure we are referring to, but they come together as a hybrid because there is a particular project, they have to work together. So you're looking at the outcome deliverables and the impact or value to the organization, really. So that is the one which drives it, not necessarily, okay, I made a decision or I have the title and I'm empowered. Everyone is empowered and enabled today in these future-looking or you know, forward-looking organizations. Yeah, DP, are, you want to add? I, yeah, these are, these are self-managing uh, teams, right? These are self-directed teams. And uh, organizations, uh, you know, will become dinosaurs if they don't change what you have said. It's just a question of time. Because the speed of change, the velocity of change which is happening is going to be such that they will not be able to continue to compete uh, you know, in the environment. Now, for some industry, it could hit them today. For some, it could be three years down the road. For other, it could be five years down the road. But it's going to happen. It's going to get impacted, right? So I think okay. okay. With that, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you to my panelists for being a, uh, for the great discussions that we've had. And thank you to the participants and the audience for being patient. Uh, Back to you. Thank you for your moderation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can give it. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you, panelists. I'm sure each one of us is taking back a lot of valuable insights with us. A special thanks to th par the participants as well for being such an interactive audience. I now invite C.S. Mahavir Lunawat, Council Member and Chairman Placement Committee, the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, to present a token of appreciation to our esteemed panelists. We we'll be begin with Dr. Bibek Banerjee. Next is Mr. Shahid Mohammad Kazi. There is a saying, Aakho mein nami aur taliyo mein kami kabhi honi na chahi. Please, let's give her. Mr. D.P. Singh. <laughs> Mr. Nishchay Suri. Dr. Kiran May. And Mr. Narayan Shankar. Thank you, panelists. May I request you for a group photograph, please? Oh, sure. On the stage. Without the photos. Meanwhile, I would now like to welcome CA Rashmi Khetrapal, Director of Visheshagya Services, for the closing address. Thank you, panelists. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have been given the most difficult and the most, uh, I would say, uh, the best last part has been reserved for me. Difficult because it's 
the last closing remark, and I, I know everybody must be hungry and wanting to go outside and enjoy the delicious food being spread out by Hotel Leela. But I will just take 10 minutes of your time. Um, when I was coming here to give a presentation and I got to know uh, the panel who would be, uh, be here before me, it was a really something which scared me because I was going to speak after a panel which was so more uh, experienced and more informative. Uh, the years of experience that this panel has had, I had had a very good time listening to all the panel and I must thank you for uh, enlarging my uh, knowledge in this past two hours. I was told to speak more on tax part. I myself being a chartered accountant and in been practice for last 16 years. So I will start with a very simple question. How many of you have done your taxes this year? Can I have, I just have five out of seven, eight, ten people. Maybe the others are about to file their taxes. Now my next question, how many of you do investments to secure your future? The investments could be in the form of a house in the form of a car to en enhance your prestige, in form of mutual funds, in form of FDs, in form of any other shares that you must have kept for yourself or your for family's future. Can I have the raise of hands? Who, anybody who has any or all of these? Right. I have a small video to show to the audience here. नहीं किया राहुल और प्रिंस के साथ में रानी जाए और जब तक आप लोग बालिग नहीं हो जाते तब तक आपकी और आपकी जायदाद की देखभाल यही लोग करेंगे क्योंकि इनके अलावा आपका और कोई भी करीबी रिश्तेदार नहीं है हम अपनी देखभाल खुद कर सकते हैं सर आप कौन होते हैं हमारे फ्यूचर का फैसला करने वाले आई एम सॉरी बेटा कानून बच्चों की राय नहीं मानता हमको कोई अलग नहीं कर सकता वकील तो कागज बना जब मजिस्ट्रेट उन पर साइन करेगा ना तब किसी का बाप भी कुछ नहीं कर सकेगा कुछ नहीं कर सकेगा बाप तो अब भी कुछ नहीं कर सकता <laughs> देखो नया क्या हो रहा है दादाजी ने राहुल भैया को मारा <laughs> और आंटी ने रोहित भैया से फर्नीचर साफ कराया और बेचारे कैस भर को लाद भी मारी <laughs> मामा जी कहते हैं कि वो मुझे दिल्ली ले जाएगी और भैया को बॉम्बे भेज देंगे पापा सॉरी पापा मैंने कहा था मैं सब कुछ संभालूंगा पापा मगर मगर मैं कुछ नहीं कर सकता पापा आई एम सॉरी पापा आई एम रियली वेरी सॉरी <laughs> Can we have the lights, please? You must be really wondering, okay, why did I show you this video in the big, in middle of end of the conference that we are having? It was just to draw your attention to a very important point, which all of you, even me, the last few months was missing from my life, and that was. Whereas we aim to secure our family's future, our future by purchasing a house, investing in shares, doing life insurance policies, we miss out on a very important element and that is will. And that is the will. We remember to buy a house. We remember to invest for the education of our children. We remember to save money for the marriage of our daughters, but we 
forget a very simple four letter word which is will how many of you have a will out of 80% of the people who raised their hands by saying that they were investing for the future i have only four hands who are saying that they invested in the will at itself i know when i have this question asked to various other people and the answer that comes is everybody knows that the will is an important part of our life we know the importance we know the consequences as we saw in the movie the whole thing if you if people who have already viewed this movie the total movie would have realized this this movie the whole concept of the movie was on the importance of a will and why don't we do that the answer a common answer which i always got for everybody was the lack of time and the botheration of going to the court with this thought in mind we came up with the idea of visheshagya which is tax and legal services redefined and the idea behind the portal was that we bring to you the services of legal people professionals lawyers company secretaries chartered accountants who are now available online to give you this kind of services by just a click of a button i will emphasize the importance of will by showing you another one clipping where having a will actually saved a kid's life sure please yes sir yes sir you still need a bill i'll tell you why because we do not know when is our time of death it could be 10 years from now it could be 20 years from now when your daughter is married and is preceded by two children no but will it not interstate pass on to the daughter sir, first before sir, it goes to their sir what children? happens is what we commonly understand is separate from what the legal uh, language That's or exactly legal laws that's exactly where the doubt ah, came in because i was yes. very sanguine that it will automatically go to her interstate uh, no sir because uh, there th th there are instances if you go to the court um, i don't know how many of you have had a misfortune of going to a court uh, for here, uh, any proceedings more than 50% of the court, uh, cases in the court are family disputes dispute between a husband and a wife dispute between a daughter and a uh you know father dispute between brothers it used be dispute between brother and a sister and all because of one common cause and that is property had we been considerate enough to do a small will even if as you rightly said that since your daughter is your only uh, living uh, relative relative so uh, the uh, you know things automatically the property automatically passes to your daughter which may be correct uh, to some extent as i said in your case maybe uh, to a larger extent in your case but would it will not be the same for all we we, we you, you know ha uh, because so sir but I, uh, i i i will just uh, go to the question answers once i have finished an, another slide which i wanted to show is is uh, how a will can actually uh, save your uh, life what i have for you is a very interesting video from par ho gaye ye wasiyat dekhi tumne ye wasiyat aisa kya hai is wasiyat mein are mera pati is wasiyat mein hai meri behna ka durbhagya हमने तो अपनी बहना की शादी प्रेम बाबू जैसे विदुर से इसलिए रचाई थी ताकि उनकी जायदाद पर अपना हक जमा ले। लेकिन हो गया बिल्कुल उसका उल्टा प्रेम बाबू निकले बिल्कुल निकम्मे वो तो सिर्फ इस जायदाद की देखभाल के लिए है इस पर उनका कोई हक नहीं है पूरी चुड़ैल निकली राजू की माँ मरने से पहले सारी जायदाद राजू के नाम कर गई सत्यानाश हो गया सत्यानाश नहीं मैनावती सवा सत्यानाश उस चुड़ैल ने वसीयत में ये भी लिखवा दिया है कि जब तक राजू की शादी नहीं हो जाती और शादी के बाद राजू की बीवी की रजामंदी नहीं होती राजू अगर चाहे भी तो जायदाद किसी और के नाम नहीं कर सकता अरे हम नाउ आई विल कनेक्ट दिस विद योर द आंसर टू योर क्वेश्चन यू सेड यू हैड अ डॉटर who was already a, a major so according to you it is correct that the property passes on to her but god forbidden if something happens to her 
after her marriage, it will give a cause of concern to the whole family. Because we never know what kind of people, what kind of life is ahead for her. So I would request. So you can, uh, you, you will of course will it to your daughter, but in, as in the case of, you, this was a beta movie clipping which I showed, in this uh, the will was will to the son, a minor son, but with a clause that even after marriage, her, his wife has to sign for the property, to, for him to be able to transfer the property to somebody else. I don't want to take the questions uh, too early in this discussion. Maybe I'll be able to answer a few from my slides itself. So as I said, uh, at Visheshagya, a half an hour session uh, at Visheshagya, which is an online e-commerce platform where you can have thousands of verified experts like chartered accountants, company secretaries, lawyers, and uh, CMAs uh, available at a click of a button, whose profile, their charges, their real-time calendar is shown on the website. You can choose the person you want to have a consultancy with, do a video or an audio consultancy with that person, and get your, uh, you know, wills or whatever legal documents uh, done. All your all compliances work can be done through this portal. So what enables actually is, you you can just go. We have an offer right now going on. So you you will be able to. Uh, Uh, do the um, registration, it's, it's very simple, it'll take five minutes and within half an hour you can have the will ready and be with you. As we, we discussed with the panels also, they were discussing the technology, where the government is going, where the digitization, how it is em empowering us and the government is moving towards it. We have e-stamp pa papers now which can easily be downloaded, you know, taken online, and the will can be made sitting at your home, in your office, or even while you are on your go. And you can also exchange your documents through this portal. This was a very small uh, part of the thing which I wanted to show, just to give you, as a social, corporate social responsibility, as the companies have a corporate social responsibility towards their uh, environment to, towards society, I would say the first responsibility is towards yourself. So once you go back, I will request you all to give it a five minute thought to what I said and the importance of well. Now since I've been asked to talk more, more about uh, taxes, so I will uh, like to emphasize on the few elements because uh, I am lucky that I have few of my clients uh, here sitting here and my friends. The basic question, which, because half of you have already filed your taxes, and half of you are in the process of filing your taxes, the basic question which, yes sir? I have a question pertaining to will, please. Yes sir. I have written a will where I have donated my body. Okay sir. So that it could go to a hospital. Organ donations. Absolutely. Yes. Right sir. Now how do I ensure that it gets implemented? Sir, uh, in, in case of organ donation, one, um, I think they give you a card which you need to carry in your wallet. That I'm carrying in my wallet all the time. Yes. But I've and, written it in the will. The question is, under the law, Yes, sir. how, do, how does the law ensure that my will gets sir, carried uh, out? You, you can put it in your written will also. And I've done that, ma'am. I've done that. Sir, I think that because the will executioners, uh, whom, whomsoever you are appointing as your will executioners, I think should be able to take care of that. And your family, of course, whom uh, you must have already apprised that you want to do uh, organ donation, which is itself is a very uh, noble uh, thing to do. Now, coming back to, I will take the questions uh, a little later. Uh, coming back to uh, the income tax returns, since we have uh, majorly high net worth individuals here, and the most major concern that they have is that of how do we ensure that our returns are not picked up for scrutiny. So I have jotted down few points which you can keep in your mind while you are filing your taxes. Whosoever is preparing your taxes, because most of you might have people in your company who are doing it or you have your full-time chartered accountants doing it. Just a few things which you should keep in mind. One is that the return should not be filed without matching it with Form 26AS. Form 26AS is the information which the income tax department has for you. So you should ensure that whatever you are filing 
matches with the Form 26AS. Second, since most of you here are uh, with the turnover, um, you know, net uh, salaries more than 50 lakhs, it is important for anybody having a salary more than 50 lakhs to give a fixer set statement. Try to be as much as truthful in declaring that statement. Nothing is going to go against you if you declare rightly, but if you declare incorrectly, tomorrow it might cause a problem for you. Then a very important thing uh, which everybody forgets, a person getting three crores of salary forgets to mention his bank interest because he thinks it is immat it's, it's a small amount. But that goes, does not go very well with the income tax department. Because how can a person having such high salary not have any savings bank or an FD interest? So please make sure ki that you avoid such a small mistake. And this is one of the major reasons why a return is picked up for scrutiny. Had you mentioned your savings bank interest, 99% chances your case will not be picked up for scrutiny. It's a very small thing, which we don't even bother because what we feel is the interest is very, very low, maybe 10,000, maybe 20,000 or 1 lakh rupees only. When I'm paying so much taxes, 1 lakh rupees hardly makes a difference. But when the department is looking from their angle, they have their certain parameters which they have fixed it because now everything is automatic. It's on a software. So there, there also there is no personal selection for scrutiny. There's an automatic process where the cases are picked up for scrutiny. And this is one of the criteria for picking up the case under scrutiny. Then is in case you are depositing more than 10 lakh rupees of cash in your bank accounts, that is also a red alert at the government side. Credit card expenses, e-swaps, and calculation of perquisites are few things which you should keep in mind while you are uh, preparing your returns. Since we are running short of time and I have been uh, asked uh, to hurry up, so any questions if you have uh, regarding uh, the filing of taxes, I'll be happy to take. But I would like to uh, uh, take your attention to the slide where I've mentioned there are no free lunches. And it is for a reason. There, with the advent of technology, we saw that everything, all of a sudden, in the last two, three years, everything became online. You can file your income tax returns online, you can file your PF returns online, your ESI returns can be filed online, your VAT returns can be filed online, everything can be filed online. And there are companies who are offering free filing of these returns. There are companies who are giving you offers to file these returns. So please think, why would somebody give you a free return? I would request, since we have most people here who are from HR department, that they should give this knowledge, pass on this knowledge to their employees, that while they are filing their returns, instead of selecting for somebody who is doing blindly, plain vanilla Form 16 filing from them, to have somebody a consultant, a chartered accountant, or a lawyer, or an expert, tax expert, who looks into their accounts, who tells them how to do a tax planning, how to do a legal tax saving, and then the returns are filed. When an employee is working, there's a lot of stress that the employee is going through. When an employee is working in an organization, it's not only him working in an organization. There is work, of course, which, for which he comes to the office, but he's concerned about tax authorities, the taxes which he has paid or not paid, because he's not very clear, then there could be family matters, there could be legal matters, and then there could be certain unconditional fears that he's going through. It is important if the uh, organization has to grow, then they start looking at the, this kinds of emotional and social needs of their employees as well. As I said in the beginning, the charity begins at home. Instead of going out and doing CSR activities and spending thousands of lakhs of money to somebody else, I would request the companies to spend that money on their employees' peacefulness, on getting the peace of mind to the employees. And as the topic of the day was restructuring the organizational design to be future ready, best reward and retention for an employee is the peace of mind. If, as an organization, you are able to give the employee that, 
you know maruti i will give you an example of maruti maruti has a special cell which takes care of the employees such social needs if if, if an employee faces any problem uh, there there is a separate cell where the employee can go and uh, there would be a task force will, which which will help him but most organizations won't have such a thing so i would request that you inculcate that culture in your organization not only encourage your employees to file your income tax returns but also encourage your employees to go for their wills they we we have properties worth crores of rupees which we give out on rent without even bothering to see the lease deed and 10 to 20% of the cases pending for property dispute uh, where uh, the tenant has uh, Ill uh, illegal uh, possession of the property are could have been avoided if a proper lease deed was done these are very small small things in our our daily life which are very useful to us but which in our run to look for the bigger achievements we tend to ignore and which come back to bite us as a bigger so with this i would like to thank you for giving me a patient hearing and uh, Thank you, Ms. Khetrapal. I would now like to thank all our sponsors: the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, presenting partner; Bridge School of Management, Conclave partner; Vishesh Sharma, our tax and legal partner; Verifacts, background verification partner; NHRD and Insights partner; Manipal University Education partner; People and Management Magazine partner. Thank you all for attending the Conclave. Please join us for drinks and dinner now. Also, we have a lucky draw being organized by ICSI. Just drop in your business cards at their stall and stand a chance to win trolley bag, induction top, and kitchen appliances. Thank you.